I am again joyed to introduce another Dr. Green. Jack Green is the Jeffrey Horrell 75 and Rodney Rose Director and Chief Curator at the Miami University Art Museum, 2021 to present, within the College of Creative Arts at Miami University, Oxford, Ohio. He received his MA and PhD in archeology span from University College London, 2001 and 2006, respectively. He has held curatorial and administrative positions at the Ashmolean Museum, the University of Oxford, OI Museum at the University of Chicago, and the Corning Museum of Glass, New York. He recently worked on cultural heritage initiatives, research, and archival projects at the American Center of Research in ACOR in Amman, Jordan. His current focus on ancient Jordan includes the Tel El Sadia Cemetery in Jordan publication project by the British Museum and the Temple of the Winged Lions publication project, Petra Jordan, through ACOR. Dr. Jack Green. Good morning. Uh, it's good to see you. Thank you so much, Julia, for the introduction. Uh, it's really wonderful to be here. Um, and um, I just want to say uh, before I begin, I do want to acknowledge the uh, Shawnee and Miami people, uh, the tribes who, among other indigenous groups, um, were the original stewards of the land that I'm speaking to you from today. I want to thank um, Director Cameron Kitchen uh, and also the organizers of the symposium, Ainsley Cameron, Sarah Wenner, uh, Trudy Gabba, Julia Olson, Emily Holtrup for their invitation and also this, this great opportunity, this wonderful event. And congratulations to all of you for the wonderful exhibition and permanent display of the new Ancient Middle East Gallery. Um, it's really wonderful, uh, not only in terms of what's displayed, but also the bridges that have been built and are being built with, with Jordan uh, today. Today I'm going to speak to you about a topic which relates to my most recent experience working in Jordan at, at the American Center of Research, ACOR, uh, between 2017 to uh, 21, uh, before I came to the Miami University Art Museum. I want to especially thank ACOR for the use of many images in this presentation, but also the people of Jordan, uh, the United States, and other countries who all contribute to the archaeological and cultural heritage work there. <coughs> when Nelson Glick excavated the Nabataean site of Kerbet Etanor in the 1930s, leading to the discovery of objects now on exhibit in the Jordan Museum and here at the Cincinnati Art Museum, the process of systematic archaeological excavations was still in its infancy in Jordan. This photograph on the right shows the archaeologists who excavated the site in 37-38, including Cincinnatians uh, Nelson Glick and his wife Helen Glick, uh, behind the relief of the vegeta vegetation goddess that we've seen in, in some of the earlier presentations also. Members of the local community, including the workers who were hired to excavate the site, were scarcely mentioned at that time, however. Um, archival photographs include images of some of the 47 individuals known to have contributed to those excavations from the local community. Although not published by Glick in his lifetime, though their names were preserved in archives and are published, both by Judith McKenzie and also uh, in the Seeing uh, History a New volume as well. And on the left of this uh, slide is a picture from the archive presented in an online article by Trudy Gabber of the Cincinnati Art Museum, uh, showing a colleague of Nelson Glick, Ali Abu Ghosh, which she states, brings back um, into conversation the narratives and identities of community members um, local to the site, whose labor and expertise are often eclipsed from the historical record. And as Alison Mickle has noted in her recent book, Why Those Who Shovel Are Silent, the work of locally hired laborers is disentangled from the rest of the archaeological process. While this situation does remain true today, there are increasing efforts being made to build stronger connections between local communities and archaeological projects that go beyond uh, just being a source of labor. 
In this talk, and based on my experience in Jordan, I'll reflect on recent trends to pur purposefully integrate local community members in the uncovering and documenting of archaeological discoveries, as well as in preserving, presenting, and serving as stewards of archaeological sites alongside governmental representatives. We'll also observe the important role of tourism and international development. The situation in 1930s in Jordan was, which was then known um, as the uh, Emirates of Transjordan under the, the uh, British mandate, um, is very different to how it is now. Um, the population was just in hundreds of thousands then, now it's well over 10 million. Um, it was then um, the Emirates of Transjordan under the British mandate administration, but it came independent from 1946. Archaeological discoveries were just beginning, as was the emergence of foreign travel and tourism. Fieldwork projects, often focusing on uncover uncovering biblical or classical sites. Therefore, the uh, study of Nabataean civilization was somewhat still in its infancy. And it wasn't really until Jordan's independence that Jordanian archaeologists had played a more prominent role, especially as governmental positions opened up for newly trained archaeologists in Jordan with university degrees. Today, more projects take place across the country and from many countries, and here's a map of projects take, that are taking place between 2018 and 19. Um, just a sample of them, not all of them. Um, uh, you, uh, unless initiated by a Jordanian university or the uh, Department of Antiquities of Jordan, many of those projects are initiated and funded by foreign universities or institutions in partnership with the Jordanian government. Field work today is usually at a much smaller scale than in the past with more focused goals and often more limited funding. Uh, such projects remain seasonal, which means that employment is not year-round. Therefore, any economic advantage for local community members can be sporadic. A drive towards uh, mass tourism uh, began in the 1980s and 1990s, and the film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade made the site of Petra uh, even more famous than it already was, leading to hundreds of thousands of more visitors. The film uh, The Martian, for example, more recently filmed in Wadi Ram, has brought more tourists, at least prior to the global pandemic. And as the importance of tourism to Jordan has increased, with close to 20% of Jordan's gross domestic product being related to tourism, there's also been an increase in university degrees focused on both archaeology and tourism, often together. There's also a focus on cultural heritage and archaeology in school education, not only as a source of national pride for Jordan's rich history, but also because archaeological and cultural sites are viewed as an important economic resource for the country. One of the biggest trends in uh, recent uh, decades has been the emergence of archaeology alongside cultural tourism, which has led to major site preservation and pres uh, presentation initiatives, including reconstruction, consolidation, shelters, pathways, uh, installations of signage, visitor centers, and museums, a number of which have been supported by the United States Agency for International Development, among other international development agencies, particularly from Japan and Italy. Another um, important aspect to briefly touch on here is the close relationship between the United States and Jordan in the prote protection of cultural heritage, in addition to funding support for economic development and support of tourism through USAID, the US State Department also provides support through the US Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation. And more recently, uh, Jordan and the United States signed a memorandum of understanding for the protection of cultural property, which will make it easier for smuggled artifacts seized in the US to be returned to Jordan, as well as to provide resources towards the protection of heritage sites, which continue to be endangered from looting and development. It's fitting that this MOU was signed beneath the relief of the vegetation goddess of Kerbet Atanor on display at the Jordan Museum. Uh, for a wider context of the close relationship between US diplomacy through economic aid and support for cultural heritage, you should definitely read the book um, by Morag Kersel and Christina Lu uh, Luke entitled Soft Power, Hard Heritage. Let's now turn to archeology span in the local community. 
A few examples of projects which follow a community archaeology model in Jordan include the Um Al Jamal archaeological project initiated by Calvin College in Michigan, which has worked closely with local community members for decades and most recently helped support the creation of an independent company to design and install signage and pathways for the site and also a visitor center. Um, uh, the Open Hand Studio, which is uh, Open Hand Studios, which is that uh, that company. This is just one example of how community members are developing opportunities to, to sustainably manage and support the future of archaeological sites for visitors, as well as to develop local expertise, knowledge, and enjoy employment for local community members. Another long-standing project is the Hespan Archaeological Project of Andrews University, also in Michigan which works closely with members of the local community to develop and maintain the site of Hespan for visitors, as well as provide opportunities for Jordanian students to work alongside American students as part of a field school. Another example is the Islamic Beda project in Petra, uh, which has a focus on providing training opportunities, particularly for female Jordanian students uh, in, and graduates in field work and documentation. I now want to highlight a project um, and one that um, I had an opportunity to be part of uh, last year, the Madaba Regional Archaeological Museum Project, or MRAMP, which is coordinated, it's international, but coordinated particularly by La Sierra University here in the United States, which through um, funding from the US Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation and with support of the Department of Antiquities, initiated a museum storage and documentation training program for museum and heritage professionals in Madaba, the famous city of mosaics, as they prepare for a future regional museum, a new museum. Uh, the shift towards a community focus on archaeology and preservation of sites is not unique to Jordan. It's taking place in other countries in the Middle East uh, and North Africa. A good example is, is that of the um, of ASOR, the American Society of Overseas Research, and its recent cultural heritage work in Libya, uh, which provides opportunities for archaeology students and community members to initiate uh, cultural heritage documentation, preservation, and also educational activities, which is particularly important uh, where local government uh, authorities may have limited resources. These uh, projects all illustrate an engagement and commitment by archaeologists and heritage professionals to engage local communities in the work being undertaken, to share knowledge and expertise, and to increase awareness locally in the importance of preserving archaeological sites and museum collections. The next uh, case study I want to present is one that I was most closely involved with recently in Jordan while working at Fort ACOR, the American Center of Research, in support of the Sustainable Cultural Heritage Through Engagement of Local Communities Project, or SHEP, a USAID-funded project through ACOR, which over nearly a decade has provided resources aimed at site preservation and presentation, capacity building and heritage management and tourism, as well as education and awareness raising of the importance of cultural heritage. SHEP has uh, supported multiple projects across Jordan, including the Temple of the Winged Lions Cultural Resource Management Initiative in Petra, the World Heritage Site of Petra, which I had the privilege of serving as project director uh, between 2017 and 2021. And since 2009, ACOR and its partners have developed innovative and inclusive approaches in Petra, working with and providing training to local communities in archaeological documentation, conservation, site management, social engagement, and education. Well, the story of this site goes back to the American expedition to Petra, directed by Philip Hammond between 1974 and 2005. The AEP carried out excavations at Petra where the ruins of a major Nabataean sanctuary, the so-called Temple of the Winged Lions, were unearthed. Uh, Chris Tuttle of ACOR launched the initiative in 2009 in response to major conservation needs at this site, as well as for excavation, survey, research, and publication. And Glenn Corbett took on the role as director between 2014 and 17. The TWL CRM initiative developed in collaboration with support from the Department of Antiquities 
and the Petra Development and Tourism Region Authority. The initiative has significant funding from the US Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation, USAID SHEP, and also ACOR itself. So to briefly introduce this site, it is located on the northern slope of uh, Wadi Musa in the uh, ceremonial and commercial center of Petra. And as you can see in this 2009 photograph, the temple is surrounded by ancient structures, areas of decorated stone retrieved from the site, which are called lapidaria, and spoil heaps from those earlier excavations. The earliest attested date of this site is 26 to 27, the Common Era, CE, which is provided by Nabataean inscription found there, which dates to the 37th year of the reign of Aratas IV. The temple was in use through the Nabataean and Roman periods, uh, so contemporary with uh, Kerbet Atanor in, in many ways, uh, until an earthquake in 363 led to its partial collapse and abandonment. And here you can see a reconstruction of the facade of the temple and its two monumental columns, which originally stood about 13 meters in height. Some of the collapsed common drums you can see here uh, on the right, um, which give you a sense of the scale of, of these uh, items. The temple cellar, um, the yielded findings, including statuette fragments and stele, wall paintings, stucco decoration, and elaborate Nabataean floral capitals, which, those which originally elaborated the columns uh, around the uh, central podium, which um, that's, uh, the central podium here, um, feature winged lion capitals, and that's what gave, gives the Temple of the Winged Lions its modern name today. We don't know what it was called in ancient times. Surrounding buildings have a domestic character, although with evidence of work, workshop activities, including a so-called painter's workshop, a metal workshop, and marble workshop. In the southwest quad quadrant, which is um, just here, um, there's a large subterranean arch space, and to the north, a paved north court with benches. Although the focus of, the wor of worship at the site continues to be debated, findings suggest the prominence of the Nabataean female deity Al-Uzza, equated in the Greek pantheon with Aphrodite. This famous stela of the goddess of Haiyan, which we've seen earlier, um, is thought to be a representation of Al-Uzza or Alat. Uh, it was found in the temple cellar in that particular temple. Isis and Osiris images also exist from the site, and stucco moldings and terracottas point to Dionysian themes. Hammond uh, wrote a lot on the question of the temple's function over time and the deity's worship there, and ongoing research and publication efforts are being carried out through ACOR and will shed further light on these findings in the future. You can also see many important artifacts from the Temple of the Winged Lions at the recently completed Petra Museum, which is an important new addition to the archaeological park there for local people and tourist visitors alike. But at the end of that AEP, the American expedition to Petra led by Hammond, despite focus on some conservation efforts over, over some of the seasons, the site was really in a poor condition uh, with deep holes, and it was a danger to visitors. Uh, the site also lacked signage, so um, the rubble slope uh, in the southwest quadrant was in danger of collapse. Some of the restored columns uh, were leaning, salts uh, and uh, within the ashlar blocks of sand sandstone were um, having an impact on the surfaces of those blocks due to the changes in humidity and climate. So in short, uh, the site um, had become endangered through the very active excavation and its continued exposure to the elements over the decades. So it's clear that something had to be done to make the sites both safe and preserved, but also accessible to visitors. So this led to the TWL CRM initiative and key, uh, four key areas. First of all, site safety, uh, sorry, documentation and uh, site uh, conservation conducted through a team of international experts and local team members, specialists and partners. Uh, site safety and interpretation 
to create pathways and to design and install signage to help visitors navigate, understand, and visualize the site. Um, community employment and training in site documentation and preservation. And this offers a form of paid employment to local communities who have typically depended on tourism as a fluctuating source of income. Uh, in recent decades. It also provides potential new future employment opportunities with other projects and initiatives and helps to change perceptions in the understanding and valuation of archaeological sites in Petra and beyond. <laughs> Lastly, educational awareness and outreach through school visits and in de development of hands-on activities for tourists and school groups, social media and also resources for tour guides all help to raise awareness of the site and the importance of archaeological preservation for future generations. An egalitarian hiring process was, hi was used to hire local team members, many of whom came from the nearby village of Um Sehun. It was possible to offer a tiered pay scale to provide opportunities for advancement based on enhanced skills, and in addition, there were opportunities for women for a range of project activities, which at this time was pretty unusual for such projects, for women to be, be such a major part of it. The sifting of spoil heaps provided clean soil for sandbags to help, help stabilize vulnerable parts of the site. And the sandbag cooperative was created whereby local women, such as Agela Jamedi here in the center, created sandbags from old rice sacks. In the process of sifting that soil, Artifacts would also be found that had been missed by the previous excavations, including objects such as this miniature silver spoon and a lamp, um, among many of other objects. Although these objects are diagnostic, um, they can't be linked to anything stratigraphic. We don't know where they came from in the site originally, but they have the additional significance that they have been retrieved by the members of the local community and have, you've got that connection between uh, those, the members of the TWL team who found them. There were also important con contributions by SELA for vocational training and protection of cultural heritage, a nonprofit organization based in the village of Um Sehun, which helped develop and implement its first community-based training program in site conservation and preservation at the Temple of the Winged Lions. And Sela today continues to work on preservation training and community engagement projects across Jordan. Conservation and training needs at the site uh, went alongside together in, in coming years. Uh, although, uh, or through uh, USAID SHEP support, the initiative hired conservators uh, to provide training and to help consolidate the masonry of the Temple Sela. Um, solutions to drainage and salts uh, in the temple cellar included the provision of a mortar capping uh, for the temple podium. The cellar is now safe and accessible and drainage is much improved. And here's another image showing the um, uh, emergency backfilling and consolidation in the southwest quadrant of the site. The hands-on training of TWLs, team members, and Petra Authority staff from local communities during the project has enabled the transfer of knowledge, skills, and best practices. This provides potential for improved or new employment opportunities for those who receive such training. Several team members uh, have since been employed within cultural resource management roles within Petra and elsewhere in Jordan. And Halima Nawafle, who you can see here on the right, for example, um, she was a documentation assistant with the initiative. She helped record the lapidarium with Marco Dana on the left uh, of then of Humboldt University in Germany. And after her work at the Temple of the Winged Lions, Halima uh, Nawafle became a full-time employee of the Petra Archaeological Park. Through uh, Shep's educational awareness program, team members played a vital role in sharing the message of site conservation and preservation through hands-on activities. Site stewards Iman Abdesalam and Ahmed Moassa hosted over 250 Jordanian school children and um, multiple tourist groups. School children came from across Jordan. And this program gave the participants the opportunity to engage in on-site activities, including sifting for artifacts, washing pottery, cleaning and mortaring a wall, and documenting the site through drawing and photography. 
Uh, new pathways and signage has made the site truly accessible. An engagement with the local students of the uh, Petra College of Tourism and Archaeology at Hussein al bin Talal in Wadi Musa near Petra, alongside staff of the Petra Authority and the Department of Antiquities, facilitated a visitor survey in 2019 and gathered vital data on tourists due to the site. And this was just before the pandemic, so this is really useful data to be able to gather. As we have seen, um, there are many examples of how archaeological projects have shifted from being just about digging up the past to also conserving and presenting and providing a sustainable future for valuing heritage at the local community level. There's also a strong sense of local community pride in the work having been conducted by their own hands. This has ha probably has the most meaning which will, renovate, uh, which will resonate for years to come. In summary, although the uh, situation is much better than it was in uh, Nelson Glick's day in terms of the recognition of local community members within archaeology and heritage, there's still a long way to go before there will be equity between local communities and archaeologists who are coming from outside of those communities. There must be an acknowledgement of the continuation of legacies of the colonial era, particularly in terms of how archaeological knowledge is shared by foreign projects, as well as opportunities for gaining knowledge and skills. Instilling a passion and interest in archaeology and heritage from the youngest age through educational programs is very important, as this can have an impact on future generations and families. The importance of sharing knowledge and developing expertise through training remains key, including at the informal and local level, which allows for greater awareness for the importance of archaeological preservation, which in theory could help preserve these sites into the future. At the same time, maintaining specialist support of experienced and trained professionals is still needed, and continued preservation and permanent and well-trained staff within local authorities are needed to continue to monitor and address longer-term challenges. But one important question is how a community-based model can be sustainable for the future. And it's acknowledged here that considerable amounts of external funds were needed to carry out such projects. And when that funding ends, so does the work often. The impact of engagement can last longer if turning those jobs turning into jobs or programs that can continue to receive funding and continue to provide training opportunities, whether that's through grants or from local NGOs or international agencies or from government or tourist-funded programs. Jordan still faces the devastating impact of a global pandemic, uh, which has really impacted tourism in a huge way. While there's no short-term solution to the situation, it's clear that a community-based approach that values education, training, and cooperation can help sow the seeds for longer-term preservation of archaeological sites, monuments, and museums. Thank you very much.